Hello, and welcome to Point Blank's introduction video about a new solution we developed to connect IoT devices securely and authenticated to cloud servers. We call this Point Blank TLS Bare Metal Bridge, or PBTLS-BMB for short. And it is a small security module you can add to any IoT device internally or as a black box externally. It is not a gateway with an embedded PC plus operating system inside. It is a small microcontroller with a dedicated firmware just doing one job. That's why we call such a solution bare metal. In this video, we will demonstrate the solution in a real use scenario. Small and legacy IoT devices often do not have the crypto algorithms or calculation power to implement the needed public key infrastructure certificates and transport layer security protocol. Additionally, legacy devices are often certified by an audit process and cannot be upgraded without extra efforts. The TLS protocol is inserted between the application logic and the internet protocol layer. It is transparent to the application's protocol and adds the authentication needed to connect directly to the cloud without a gateway. In this demonstration, we will use a PC with the browser as our legacy IoT device. The browser can use HTTP without TLS or HTTPS with TLS included. Our cloud server, like all cloud IoT services, only support TLS connections, so that here, only HTTPS requests are answered by delivering an HTML page and its content. In the first video, we will only use the PC directly connected to the internet, and we'll show the difference between trying to connect with HTTP and HTTPS to our demo web server. We will open the browser and start our company page. With the function key F12, we will activate the network diagnosis page so we can see a list of the content that is loaded by the browser. We will open Wireshark to lock the internet protocol and type in the HTTP request to see the answer given back by the cloud web server. We can see the server is responding with a 403 error and not supporting unsecured connections without credentials, meaning a TLS certificate exchange. Next, we will do the same thing with the TLS handshake and a certificate exchange by entering an HTTPS request to our demo server. So now that we can see the page and that the server answered with all the content in the Wireshark log, we can also see the TLS protocol with its client and server hello communication buildup, the key exchange, and the encrypted application data transfer. The browser shows the key lock symbol, which means the page and content is TLS authenticated and secured. In the second part, we would like to introduce the point blank TLS bare metal bridge. Inside, we have just one small MS500 special hardware secured microcontroller from EWBM, which supports secured memory and hardware engines for executing the crypto algorithms, as well as two internet interface chips that are connected to the MCU. We use one interface for the internal unsecured connection to the legacy IoT device, or PC in this case. For this demo, we need to tell Windows that any requests to our demo server need to go to the bridge by editing the system's routing file, which are called hosts. The other port of our bridge is then configured to make the TLS connection to our cloud demo server. In the next video, we connect the bridge by USB to the PC for power supply and to have a debug interface for a closer look into the communication. We will disconnect the PC from the internet and plug this connection to the bridge's TLS secured port. We then connect the unsecured port with the PC. This is our bare metal bridge with two internet interfaces. We will take the internet connection out of the PC and into the TLS secured interface of our bridge. Then we will connect the USB cable to the PC for the bridge's power supply and debug output and then use a short ethernet cable to connect the PC with the other port of our bare metal bridge. So now, the only way the PC can connect to the internet is through the TLS bridge. We will now open the terminal and connect to the USB debug interface. 
As soon as we turn the power on, we can see the bridge's debug output. We will open the configuration tool and wait for the bridge to receive IP addresses by DHCP. And now we can hit the device search button and retrieve the current configuration from our bridge. We have already configured one port to be the TCP slash IP client and to connect by TLS port 443 to our demo web server and the second port to be the server for the IoT device or our browser to connect to. We need to know the server's IP address in order to add this to the system's host file for the PC's correct routing. Now we can start our browser again. Open the diagnosis with F12 and connect to our demo server. This time, the request is answered with the web page content and it is indeed HTTP, not HTTPS. However, the browser shows us a not secure connection, but we know from our first experiment that the server only supports HTTPS, so the bridge did the conversion without touching the IoT device's communication protocol. Here, this is the browser's HTTP. To conclude this video, we would like to present some examples for possible application use cases. As shown in this video, the dedicated use case is a legacy IoT application like a factory or home automation controller. With the TLS bare metal bridge as an external black box, this kind of application will be enabled to be securely connected to the cloud. The same could be true for webcams, but the data throughput is not high enough. However, the MS500 MCU from EWBM can be used as a coprocessor inside a webcam. It can encrypt a full HD video stream, 30 frames per second in real time. And the functions of the bare metal bridge are moved into the webcam with the MS500 as well. We will have a dedicated video about that in the near future. For IoT applications without direct internet connectivity, the MS500 MCU complemented with an Ethernet chip can add the needed connectivity. Together with EWBM, we have developed exactly that. The secure sensor to Ethernet module, named SS2E for the DIL footprint and named ESC100 for the SMD footprint version. With that module or the two chips, any serial interface sensor or actuator can be TLS enabled and securely connected to the cloud. We will also have a dedicated video about the SS2E and ESC100 module in the near future. You can find all of our contact information and product references linked in the description below and on our webpage, pointblank.de/en. Thank you for watching and goodbye.